Welcome, welcome, welcome back again to SVGSPN. My name is Aranda Ash. I'm joined again by Mr. Debson Quickshank. Debson, we got a lot of football to cover. We are in round 21 of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Premier League. Uh, why was there a delay? Why do we have more games than usual? Uh, we have 12 teams in the Premier League, so usually we have six games per round. However, they could unite uh, two extra games from postponements in previous rounds. Beckway's Island, the Grenadines. So they usually have to take a boat and get some accommodation to play on the mainland. Our games are being played on the mainland due to coronavirus. So hopefully they're good games and good goals. We have a lot of goals. I think we have 30 plus goals to review. And our marquee matchup was Jabel versus System 3. Marquee matchup for round 21, Jabel versus System 3. Why was that such an important game? Uh, so going into this game, Jabel and System 3, they are fighting for the second spot. System 3 were in second position, Jabel third place. A win for either team would put them in the driving seat to secure that second spot. Okay, as we talked about last week, Hope International has secured the championship. Congratulations to Brad Edwards and all the players at Hope International, coaching staff and everybody are invited to the CONCACAF Club Championships representing the country. Um, but let's talk about the others. So let's get straight into this highlight package. So Devson, who are we looking at right now? Uh, so we have Nordywood Predators facing Beckwith United here. We're looking at the opening goal. Opening goal, like soft goal, a, soft, soft, soft it, goal, soft it, like It was an easier. intended cross, but it so we both agree this was position. not a shot on goal. Well, I, I think the player might be channeling some in a Ronaldinho there, but I think it was a cross. I, I, I tend to agree. We pride ourselves in being ruthlessly truthful here. We, we saw some terrible goalkeeping in this round. Perhaps the worst I've seen in the four weeks that we've covered. And I think this goal was one of them. This is my man is tall enough to put his hand over the goal. Yes, even the even David Seaman legend makes this kind of mistake, but I mean, it's still a shock when you see a goal like this. This is the second goal for North Leadwood Predators, and this is their center mid, one of the co-captains, I believe, along with the the center back. Um, he had he had a, a very good game. The defender heads it back to the middle, unfortunately. And Cortland Williams is there to apply the finishing touches. At this point, think Beckway has given up on their season? They're consigned to being relegated back to first division? Well, coming into this round, they were already in the relegation zone and condemned to the first division. So I don't know, maybe they were lacking motivation. And this is Predators North Leeward's third goal. A thing of beauty, again, with the same goal scorer. One thing I have yeah. not seen in St. Vincent is that run, right? We talk about that all the time. He's a center midfielder. We don't see this run in most of the games that we cover. We don't see movement. At least I don't see movement from the midfielders. And here he is taking off from half field, making a direct run forward and getting a wonderfully timed pass. I love the pass. And I have to big up my under-17 player there, Courtney Franklin. The work that we're doing at under 17 is working. <laughs> the goal scorer or the passer here? The passer. Okay. So, lovely weight of the pass. Just finding the gap there between the center back and the wing back. And again, beautiful run by Carla Williams. I saw the kinds of things that we want to see on a goal like this. Movement, interplay. And it just begs the question. I know when you play against better teams, it's more of a challenge because they're better athletes and there are better systems of play. But it just shows me that it's possible. It's possible for us to do these things. We just have to be able to do it on a consistent level. The more you attempt to do it, the easier it will become. Our next game is Pastures versus, well, they call themselves awesome, but we'll see. Again, Devson, is that goal that we see every game. It's a version of it. This one was not directly 20,000 miles into the air. But it's still a ball played over the center back. And what do we see? We see miscommunication between the center back on one team and their goalkeeper that leads to a, a goal that should have easily been prevented. Yeah, both, both the defender and the keeper had time to deal with this, and none of them did. Now, Pastures is a team 
of some name in St. Vincent. What has happened to them the past couple of games? Because I don't, I'm not impressed with this at all. I think they're struggling for fitness. A lot of players are out injured and there's a lack of depth in the squad. So the second string players are struggling at the moment. Perhaps the worst defender I've seen in St. Vincent is this, is this dread right here. And I, I'm a dread myself and we don't like to hate on ourselves because we're, we're about peace and love and inclusivity. But honestly, he's got a stomach. He looks old. He looks terribly out of shape. Even this other center back, is it Hamlet? Hamlet is in center back motion. Okay, is he, is he somebody that played national? Is it the same Hamlet I'm thinking about? Yeah, he's a national player. Okay, he's got to get in shape. That's, that's uh, I, I've not been impressed. He can't move. He cannot move. And this dread right here, what do we see about this, this goal that stands out for you? For me, the dread is giving, the center back is giving the forward his right foot. It is clear that the forward is right footed. He's allowing the forward to go to his right. He should have marked off Thompson's right foot, tried to get him on the left, send him to the touch line, and maybe forcing him to cross where he might have had some help from his other defenders. If we haven't mentioned the word before, and St. Vincent is a particular word for a shot like this, it's called a bull wood. Is the most masculine word you can think of. Bull, as in the animal, wood meaning, well, that thing down there. So it's super masculine. Finish for me right now. Bull wood! Top class. Next game we're looking at here is um, Hope in Black, who's already clinched the, the title versus SV United. You said a team from out Georgetown side, right? Do you think our boy Jilks here, number 24, meant, was this a let? Did he mean to do that? <laughs> or he was scared. I, I, I thought I thought he felt the pressure from the defender and pulled out, but maybe he had some awareness that he had a teammate coming in from the back as well. So here is SB United's first goal here off of a turnover in the middle of the field. Where we are in zone 14 depths in the magical zone where miracles happen. Play the ball out. A weak goal there. I think Hope had the night off. Nice pass from Akron Edwards, he's featuring later in the game as well, from the open man. This was what? SB United's second goal? Again, I like the finishes. I like the finishes. I like the finish from the goal that we just saw, Thompson. I like this very calm finish. Again, guys on Hope are jogging. Yeah, we've, the season we've, is over for them. <laughs> we're going to see two good goals here from Akron Edwards. He's a player I like. A very good, calm finish on the ball. But for these two goals, we're also going to see some mistakes from Hope in the midfield and quick transition. Yeah, my man doesn't move for the ball there. Whoever he is, I think yeah. he's the guy that scored the first goal, does not move for the ball. And again, I forgive them because they've already, they've already done what they were supposed to. They wrapped up the league. And so I think it was more fun than anything for Hope in this game. Again, another calm finish. But it comes from the typical St. Vincent assist, which is a long ball over the top. But I can't blame you. Again, we've gone over this the last episode. If we know a goalkeeper and a center back are going to make a mistake or they're going to give you that opportunity, then take advantage of it. Next game on the slate is Awesome FC versus uh, Beckway United. Again, we go that Beckway had to play a couple games because they just had to make it up. You know, due to some, some circumstances about, you know, where Beckway is, it's a task to get the team from their island on the ferry to come over. And you say sometimes they have to stay in Kingstown overnight and play a couple games just to, just to make it worth their while. And that wasn't able to happen because of weather or what have you. So now they had three games this round. Again, we talk about round 21 for me is defined by goalkeeper mistakes. That cannot happen. That cannot happen. A ball is played right to you. You've got to be able to hold that ball, hold that ball. Yeah. And from quite some distance as well, at least 35 yards out, he had lots of time to see it. This was uh, Beckway's second goal. And again, we've seen a lot of set-piece goals this round. Why do you think that is? I think the possibilities of set-piece goals are, are set piece goals are always there because we don't defend set-pieces as well as we should. As we see here, there's a Becker player who jumps uncontested and finishes the header. What sometimes lets us down is the accuracy of the delivery 
on the set pieces. So as long as you're accurate with your delivery, then you can put your team in good position to score. We're going to see two good set piece goals here. One from Jabel and a direct free kick, which I have not seen so far. A direct free kick. That was a thing of beauty. One thing I do notice about the corner kicks, they are skied. They are just popped way up in the air as if they're punting the ball and then they're just hoping. For me, a corner kick is more driven. The ball goes yeah. maybe well, should be twice as high as the crossbar, comes down so then you don't have to put a lot of force on it. So I, I see a lot of the, the corner kicks that I see, the balls are just pelted, ponged, ponged way up into the sky. Those balls are not ideal for heading at all. You want to have balls coming in with pace that you could just easily direct. And a little spin on it, like we see on uh, uh, last round with Doppel's cross to the far post for James. You want to have a little spin on the ball so that makes it easier for contact. This was Awesome's goal here, and it was a legitimate goal. It was a legitimate goal. In terms of the buildup, yes, there's a goalkeeper error, but I like this. Back, up, overlapping run, terrible defending there. My man puts his foot up in the air when all he had to do was take two steps to his left and head the ball out. And that comes back to training and the repetition, knowing what needs to happen, how to move our body. He's jumping to get his knee or thigh to a ball that's above his head. What sense does that make? But I like the run. Good supporting run and squaring back the ball. Perfect weight of pass. The oncoming runner just has to put his foot on direct it in the card of the goal. Next we have Avenues versus... Sand Hill. Now, this could have easily been the marquee match, not in name, but in terms of the quality of the goals. Now, we are, our marquee match for round 21 is Jabel versus System 3 because of the meaning of it, because both teams are fighting for second place. A tight race, but in terms of just entertainment value and the quality, that, that is a fantastic goal. Those are the kinds of services that we want to see yeah. on corner kicks. Now, the ball is not going above the grandstand. Corner kicks that I see go above the grandstand and come down. This is a driven ball with pace, with a little spin that somebody can redirect. There's some tall guys and on, those, on those side hill here. Those are two players doing something that they are custom and very, quite capable of doing. Starting with Rohan Thomas Jr. as a very good and set piece deliveries. And you will see another beautiful assist from him a little later on. But the goal scorer, is he a center back? Romario Wills is a central midfielder. Wow. He's actually a very talented player, but he has been out of the game for a while and he's just getting back his form and fitness. Injury? I mean, that's another issue in St. Vincent that we, our medical system is not the best in the world. So I sometimes worry about players who get hurt, that they're not re receiving uh, the kind of medical assistance that would get them back on the field as quickly as possible, as healthy as possible. I worry about things like ligament damage, ACL, MCL, tears, because up until a few years ago, I didn't think there was even an MRI machine in St. Vincent. And certainly, these clubs don't have the funds to pay for their players to get these, si these types of, at least, analysis physically. So is that something you think about? Is that something you worry about, uh, especially with your boys, your team? Yeah, definitely. Sometimes I, I look into options of getting insurance for players, but as you said, funding is an issue. But hopefully one day we can get to the level where we have big sponsorships and professional leagues and funds are available for players to have them up and running in ideal condition. I believe this was Avenues' first goal. Again, switching the point of attack, Get it to the weak side. That was a very cheeky, cheeky goal there. Possible, possible nominee for our goal of the round. Yeah, we, that is we a saw, calm, we, you know, we messy type some, finish. We saw some lovely goals in this round. A beautiful turn from Damal Francis as well, a former national player, showing that he still has some skills in the midfield. And so this gentleman right here. Goal scorer here, Garrett Ledgerwood, who was a national under 20 player again. He has been out with some injuries, but hopefully he can recover his form and fitness and get back to his 
typical running on the field. So again, this is but this is finish here. Yeah, this is what I like to see more of for teams like Jabel that have players with considerably more speed than even this guy who scores the goal. Again, we have the ball on one side. We have most of the defenders of the opposition on that side of the field. We get the ball quickly, isolate our fastest player, be it number 10 or 24 from Jabel, number 17 from Hope or Jilks, number 24 from Hope or 7, James from System 3, and allow them to get the ball attacking towards that far post instead of taking the ball, again, yeah, outside yeah. to the sideline and just skying it for a header, which is something there. we don't do. This play starts with Laman Tector, and he's the person who initiates that change of direction of the play. And he's a very old player, but he's still showing that he has the capability. And I've been looking at him playing, and usually his passing accuracy is a very high percentage in all these games, showing the youngsters how to do it. We're now into the second half. Um... Again, that searching ball. This time, it's not way up in the air. There was intent for me because he clearly wanted to get the ball. But this is what got me and why I started the clip there. That nonsense right there. This play starts because that gentleman on side of hill decides to make a basketball play. You know LeBron? When LeBron in Cleveland, he's playing against the Lakers. You know what I'm talking about? He looks away, and this is what my man does. He tries to do that. He tries to do the LeBron. He tries to look away and make a pass with the outside of his foot. When it's clear the way he's moving, he's not athletic enough to do that. Again, nice, calm finish on the, on the, on the ground there. I love this goal right there. I love this Yes, goal yes, goal yes. Definitely a candidate for goal of the round. And I'm going to tell you something I like about this. Uh, he decides to cut back inside. He is changing the angle and getting an excellent ball to Webb. Who finishes? Magnificent football! The Beautiful goal. Is magical. Again, this is, this is a long pass that I accept because it's with intention. He, he, he meant to put the ball there. He's not just popping it. He looks up. My guy's in zone 16. I'm going to get the ball over there. Wonderful take on the first touch. What did you see as well here? Uh, what I'd like to highlight is that about six seconds into this play, we see a number 12, the goal scorer, is in his own half. Then when he realizes that the assist from Thomas, he looks up, he makes a dart in 40-yard run and still has the composure to take it down like there's glue on his foot. And then There he is right there, right? He's going. right there. Yes. He's right there at the bottom of the screen. He's reading the play. He doesn't stop. He sees an opening ahead, 20 yards ahead of him. And again, it's what we have in St. Vincent. We have speed. We have speed, but it's about how to uh, effectively use it without butting ourselves. And this is a way to do it. And again, Debs and I sound like a broken record. Take the ball to one side of the field. There'll be space on the other side. Bring it back. We love to do it with a long diagonal ball, but we can do that as we saw with uh, Predators, uh, the second goal Predators score where their midfielder got the ball. Um, on one side of the circle, put it to his uh, teammate on the other side of the circle, then took off running. We can do these things. And again, part of this analysis is to show us video evidence. Do what works. If this works, do it. Whatever doesn't work, these hopeful long balls, these corner kicks in the sky way up in the air, stop doing them. And that's how we get better. Now, this year, Devson was perhaps – I've not seen a, a direct free kick goal in the weeks that we've been covering this. And this was 90th minute. This was last minutes of the game to tie. Now, honestly, these teams are middle of the road, or are they in a relegation battle as well? They're all up for that relegation title. You'll go so, a bit more in-depth into it a little later. So this was a big goal. Tying this game in the 90th minute with this fantastic free kick, that, that really yeah. meant something. To... Every point comes here for these teams. Okay, so that's, that's a big deal for Avenues right there. Might be my goal of the year candidate there. I like goals like that, that have extra value, extra meaning for teams. That might be a goal that saves Avenues' season. 
Fifth minute of, of the game is really um, justice and, and good for Greg's FC. It's now with James. He's trying to go forward. Finds Sam. Sam is going through. Sam walks through that defense quite easily. And it is. It's going to be a goal. Oh, my word. Oh, that was a, a goal by Greg's United. For me, a team that their results and their position on the table, for me, is not indicative of the kind of soccer that I'm seeing from them, the kind of football that I see them play. Would you agree? Yeah, they've been playing quality football, probably looking like the best team since the restart. Excellent player from Zinedine Zidane Sam. Now that is his real name. That is his real name, Zidane. Yeah, that, that's his real name, Zidane. And looking like Zidane here too. Going through three Get, guys. Getting past his defenders and finding his teammates for the easy finish. So the other thing that we see, besides the goalkeeping errors around 20, 21, is, for me, the supporting runs. Like, my man who finishes his goal is in the perfect angle to finish this shot first time. So, again, it tells me that the, the, the concepts are there. It's just the repetition, the repetition, the repetition in practice every single day and to understand, like, if I'm close to the end line there, I'm not going to make a run inside the six-yard box. I'm going to go to the penalty spot. So Zidane can find me. And even this, how many times have we seen a player get that ball and just try to turn by himself? But no, he's looking for a teammate. This guy right here. Again, I've seen video where this person is just standing there, tries to do something stupid. No, find a teammate. Find a teammate and then keep the ball moving. Greg's is a team that I'm, I'm keeping my eye on, man. Are they in the relegation battle as well? Yes, well, Greg's. It's already confirmed to be relegated. Greg's, Beckway, and Chelsea. They have already booked their tickets to the fourth division. So what two teams are still, again, based on results for the next round coming up this Saturday, round 22? Well, there, there are four teams who still have a possibility of being relegated. Awesome, Avenues, SP United, and Sand Hill. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Next game we're looking at is Camadonia Chelsea in blue versus Beckway. Again, having to play a couple games. We hear Chelsea, Chelsea in blue versus Beckway right. in red. Beckway's first goal, again, comes off a set piece. And I will accept that corner because it's not skied above the pavilion. The second goal of the game was, a, I believe, a, a humdinger here. What is your boy thinking there, Nipson? What is your goalkeeper friend thinking there? I have no idea. To put one hand up on a ball that's coming straight to him. Can you catch this ball? Yes, you can. You can catch this ball with both hands. You can catch this ball with both hands. This person on Beckwin, number 11, he has the audacity to hope and think that there might be a mistake. Now, there's a chance that he meant to put this at the back post because I see a red player over there. But again, given what we've seen over the past four weeks, why not take the chance? And our soccer is worse for that because that is not a chance anybody anywhere in the world should take. Another set piece goal here. That's a powerful, powerful header. Yes, it is. And a good jump. A fantastic jump. Fantastic. The skies above everybody. This might be, I, I, I didn't take a look at this. This might be a nominee for goal of the round because the power he gets, he's above every. This is Sergio Ramos. If Sergio Ramos does this, everybody's talking about how good Sergio Ramos is. My man skies above everybody. And this is a powerful header into the upper corner. That is a legitimate world class goal. Nero keeps it in touch. He is moving up on the right. A good delivery into the area now. Book is on it. Book has an opportunity. Book misses it. He has a second and scores. It's this is two. a nice ball as well. I mean, again, broken record. I don't like the long balls, but I think there was intention here. And there was space. There was space yeah. to play the ball into. And, and, and the ball was played with the required accuracy and yes. course. It wasn't hit straight to the keeper. It bent right back into the path of the oncoming runner. I'm going to give Beckway the, the, the benefit of the doubt and blame the field for this goal because three guys and a goalie back there, and the goal scorer initially slips. Initially slips, but has time to recover. 
I think the guy who eventually starts, tries to slide tackle for the ball, he slips right there. He skids, and that gives the Chelsea finisher enough time. Weather was a factor. We see this in a muddy field. Everybody's slipping. There's a foul there. There's clearly a foul there. What's interesting for me on this play is that the goal scorer is offside. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I had to notice that. So there's a nice, nice play. Again, the run, the supporting run I like. He runs, and because he runs, he gets fouled, but he causes enough if, of a havoc. If we pass it, no, when the shot is yes, taken. Yes, he's on the ground, but he is. I see that. I see that absolutely, absolutely. Didn't notice that before. But yeah, foul number one, stoppage of play right there. Foul number two, clearly stoppage of play, Beckway's ball. And at this point, when this ball is struck, is he beyond? Absolutely. He's beyond the Beckway defender. Should have been called back, but bang, bang, happened too fast. And honestly, I think nobody cares. Nobody cares. These teams are both relegated. Nobody gives a damn. So those are most of the games, about seven of the games. And we're saving perhaps not the best game because I still think Sign Hill versus Avenues 3-3 is always a good game. So what's interesting about this game is that there were three goals within the first four minutes of this game. We don't get to see the first goal because the camera didn't pick it up. It was that quick. But what was the description of that goal? It seemed like the system tree keeper was late off his line. Maybe another ball off over the top and the goal scorer, Brandon Johnson, capitalized on some miscommunication box. And this is System 3 with the ball here. And these are three one-touch passes and a thing of beauty. How many times have we seen this, Debson? This is football. This is what we love about football. We don't yeah, see this enough. Beautiful combination player, particularly from James. I like that after his back heel pass, he makes the diagonal run into space and creates the penalty. One pass outside. Ball comes back inside. Goes into a different zone. Goes around Tian Gordon. They're making him look like an old man. Yeah, I said it, Tian. Made you look old. <laughs> and then and then we get a PK. That James foul led, led to our man. Our man. Our man. <laughs> the man that I just killed. Our man, Ak. 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 He took a fantastic PK. A man can strike a ball. He's one of the best ball strikers I've seen in some business in terms of those long balls and actually took some time to show him or to, to to get some highlights of him doing specifically that so i was proud of him for coming back and obviously he's somebody they trust he had the, the game that we were lambasting him he had the captain's armband on so they certainly trust trust him as a player he just made some bad decisions and he hasn't made he hasn't been making those stupid decisions uh in the subsequent games so that was one one again we missed the uh the first Jabel goal. And this was a thing of beauty for me here. Yeah. Fantastic finish. Again, the what, speed. What, what I love about this is the run from the Souza. He starts off like he's going to run straight to the six yard box. If you pause it for a second, the right back, well, the left back looks at him and he loses him because he makes a little dart back to the penalty spot and just creates that space for himself so he can get the finish. Good movement from the Sousa. So again, this is all within the first four minutes of the game. It's already 2-1. Um, Jabel. Here again, a nice intentional diagonal ball. Not a hopeful ball. Intentional to the side. Runners making runs into the box. I like the attempt. I like the thought as yeah, a one-time finish, yeah. but he had time. Is this Doppel on the ball here or no? That's somebody else. Wonderful. Fit. And the speed. Look at the runners. My man just went in there. A nice cross. He had time to take that down and maybe do something better with that. Again, we've seen System 3 and other teams. You talked about midfield play. Wonderful turn by James. He was having a fantastic year. Uh, is he one of the surprises of the tournament? He had some attention before. He was playing some good football. He dropped off for a little while, but he seems to be regaining top form. And right now he's very good to look at. He's 
doing some good stuff on the field. Wonderful again. I, 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 I like run. what he does here on the turn. He baits the defender a bit and then just accelerates and so on and with ease. So good thinking there as well. But again, for me, it's this pass here that we don't see enough. In, in games that I've watched, that guy would have just launched the ball straight forward. But here, System 3 is trying to play ball. Again, base the defender in, shields him with his body. Maybe with three people ahead of him, he could have tapped the ball because there were two guys open on the far side, but I don't blame him for that because he's hot. He's feeling good about himself. So again, wonderful run, diagonal from zone 14, heading into zone 16, comes back into zone 17. There's, again, I got to commend Jabel as well for having the defenders drop back. But it's this pass here for me that started everything. Just a simple thing. Just a simple thing. This one, she should have put this one away. Is this D'Souza again? Yes, that's D'Souza. Good turn there. Look, notice that the defenders are up at half field, and he has to do a better job there. Good player, but we would like him to finish that one. D'Souza had lots of time there, no pressure on the ball. Rushed to finish a bit and gave the keeper opportunity to make the save. Now, again, this is what they should and could do so well. Here's Ak. Hey. Ak tries the diagonal ball. It's beautiful. This is what you should do. Don't send the ball to the other team's center back. If you're right back, send it across the field like that. And then this, one touch, one touch. Yeah, beautiful. From Through there with the outside of the foot. The conception of the play was genius for both sides. Ak, fantastic ball. You can do this. Don't do this over the top straight to the other team's keeper. Jabel comes back and, again, uses their speed. But he doesn't go down the line. He sees there's opening on the other side of the field, and he plays the ball back to a midfielder. That's all Debson and I are screaming for. Play the ball back to the midfielder and let the midfielder make that decision. What else do you see here that impressed you? All right, I love the quick switch of play. It starts from Soares here with a little chip over the top. He plays it into this wizard. One touch on the ball. Finds Terrace and Joseph, who attempts the true ball to left wing to find his brother, Terrace Joseph. And again, it's a cuts it out, but lovely play. Switching and it's a the through game, ball that's not... Switching the point of attack. Yeah, and it's a through ball that's not going to the keeper. It's going into what, you know, if we put up that graphic, it's into those half zones where the keeper then has to make a decision... Does he want to come out? And you see the keeper come out fully, then he hesitates. We take a look at that again when we look at it. The keeper momentarily hesitates. You want a keeper to be forced to make that decision because, I mean, the old adage, he who hesitates loses, right? So anytime a keeper has to hesitate or a defender has to hesitate, he loses. He's coming out strong, and then uh, he has to stop there. And if Joseph was quicker, if it was the ball was a little bit more accurate, he just toe pokes that ball in. Uh, this was Jabel's a third goal. A third goal. Again, another set piece. This is the round 21 is the round of runs off the ball, goalkeeper mistakes, and set piece goals. Did he mean to do this? At this point, it doesn't matter because it's actually, it was wonderful. Yeah, well, it, was, it was a brilliant looping header. Yeah, I don't know who practices poor, looping poor, headers, poor. but it worked. <laughs> perfect, perfect. The ball is driven about post high, so it's coming down. It's not going up. The ball is coming down. It's a nice arc about halfway between where the ball is taken and the actual impact, the header or the volley. The ball should be coming down because we want to put it low. So wonderful finish by Jabel there. Here what I like is Doppel coming back for the ball. I don't know if I've seen this a lot. How far up the field he was, Doppel is... 25 yards away, he comes back for the ball because that's what a number six does. That's what a midfielder does. Other guy gets in his way, but, you know, I had to highlight that. This is what we need to see more of. Come back, get the ball. You are the decision maker, so make decisions. And he did there. Everything we like about football is demonstrated in this one play here. Again, there's calm coming out of the back. Nobody's launching the ball up. And when it is put up, it's put up with intention. They're supporting runs. They're short interplay. People are making runs off the ball. The ball is switched twice. Twice. From the right side of the field, through the middle, to the left side where there is space, and then bring the ball back. 
because the red team system three then has to switch, which they do. And now there's space over here in zone 17 when we want the ball. What do you like about this one, Debson? Uh, it's again, some compliments for the Souza. I like how he holds up the play and gets the midfielders into the play. He chests it down and finds his attacking midfielder, Terrison Joseph again, a lovely turn. And he doesn't stop, he keeps running. That's the definition of the Sousa. He never stops, so always keeps running. Is he somebody who's also getting looks for the national team? Yes, he, he is in the training squad. Okay. Now, you, you've said that before, training squad, but has he played before? Or he's now getting looks based on some he performances has, from the Premier League? He has played for the national under-20 team. He hasn't played for the national team before, but he has been training with them. Again, I think I also enjoy this slow build-up here. Again, keep possession of the ball. Keep possession of the ball. Make the other team work. Keep possession of the ball in the middle of the field. The opportunities will open up. We run ourselves ragged. I think Coach Joel was making the point. I think you and I were arguing about the fitness level of St. Vincent. Which Coach Joel was arguing about, well, it's a style of play where it's just up and down. It doesn't need to be. When you can do things like this, people get a break, and you keep possession of the ball. Now, Debson, this, this clip here really impressed me because it's the first time I've seen a team go from end to end involving four or five players. Yeah. And the ball Even though the ball is down. all on one side of the field, all the way down, this can be repeated. There is no need to keep launching the effing ball straight forward, punging it, punging it up, when you can do this. And everybody's chill. This is 25 minutes into the game here. Sharp Everybody's passes, relaxed. 15, 20 yards. And you're from one end of the field from the keeper straight to the striker. Creates opportunity for James. Lovely and it was easy. System three. It was easy. The game can be this easy. If you understand that we can do this. And again, why do we do analysis? So that we can see the patterns. Wonderful run by Dapo, by the way. Again, I hear he's going to college. He told me today that he's going to college in the U.S. come uh, January. So congratulations to him. And I think he's going to do well there because he's incredibly smart. I've been very impressed with his, with his play. So again, sees the opening, sees their space, doesn't stand, more space, picks up speed a little bit, doesn't try to take the ball, understand he's got a quality play ahead of him, and makes that pass. Wonderful job, System 3. Here we see, again, starting with um, Tion, Jabel's strength, blazing speed when they decide to go forward. And they're consistent in that, taking the ball down one side of the field, somewhere between the six-yard box and the 18, and passing it far post. Beautiful run, wonderful through ball that's not played to the sideline. It's played into the interior where the player who's going to the ball can get it and keep advancing towards the goal. Should have been a better finish, but to me, this is Jabel in a nutshell. Who's this number 20 here? This is not D'Souza, right? That's Joan Sawyers. Okay, I'll, take, I'll take the finish. I mean, you know, more practice, it's a hit or miss thing, but what I'm always impressed with is the ability to create the opportunity. Yeah. That could have been an easy time. Some, some good decisions and some good thinking right through here. Absolutely. The pass from... Sutton through the gap between the center back and the wing wing back. Finds Sawyers, plays it across goal. Finds Terrace Joseph, whose shot is just for touch off target. After those goals, after that initial spurt, again, three goals were scored within the first four minutes of the game. For me, system three had much of the better play. And this was a wonderful example of a nice overlapping run here. I think it starts with Dapol, finds that guy, and Dapol again makes the run wide, looks up, doesn't try to mess around, gets a beautiful cross, and that's a nice, nice header that just misses the target. We're in the second half here. Again, I like the attempt. There's a stay back who actually gets a ball. But he has no idea what to do with it, bumbles it, System 3 is on. And System 3, for us, had the better of play for most of the game, following those, those quick goals. That could have easily been a finish right there. Your assessment as well, System 3, for us, was the better team on the night? Yes, System 3 won the game on points. 
But unfortunately for them, the game is not played on points, it's played on goals. <laughs> right, right. So Jabel got the knockout blow again, all within the first four minutes, and held on, and held on. But again, I like this idea. Involve the outside bat, but now this is what happens in St. Vincent. He has no idea what to do. Just give the ball up. Don't try to do anything else because you just cost your team a possible goal. That's James again, a wonderful cut there, and just an unlucky finish. Here we see the sequence that leads to Systems 3's second goal. Damn it, this is a clear dive. I think he questioned the play about smart, smart play from Clark. He realizes the defender's leg is outstretched and makes the necessary contact. What, what do we say? What do we say? My friend, my friend who used to live in Kingstown used to tell me before they build the, you know, where the ferry is, they used to go down there and, and, and dive in. Well, he didn't say dive. They should throw headers. They should throw headers for coins from tourists. So my man right here, he's going back in the day throwing headers. Like he got shot in the thigh right there. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh Lord. Oh God, oh Lord, oh God. Oh. <laughs> but you do whatever you have to to get opportunities for you. Just team. three wins the penalty kick. And who is their offensive force for the entire game? My man. Ack, what is his last name? Johnny. of the game is really um, justice and, and good for Greg's FC. It's now with James. He shall go forward. Find Sam. Sam is going through. Sam walks through that defense quite easily. And it is. He's going to go. Round 21 came to an end. I uh, saw a lot of goals, especially in that, is it Sign Hill versus Avenues game? Come candidates there Sign for goal of the round. And as you mentioned, Friday and Saturday are big in St. Vincent for three or four teams. Who plays Friday again? Uh, so Friday, we're gonna have Greg Stain Avenues. Avenues are one of those candidates for the relegation position. They'll be looking for three points to maintain their position in the Premier League. Alright, so I'm gonna predict a Greg's win. Greg's 3-1 over Avenues. Okay, what about Saturday? Or is there a second game Friday night? There's a second game on, on Friday night. However, the big matchup, the other big matchup for Saturday is S United versus Sand Hill. Winner will maintain their position in the Premier League. I, I think I'm gonna give SV the edge for that one. SV two one win. Do you do you predict any upsets? Any major upsets this weekend? Not really. I think Hope is already on vacation, so <laughs> <Don't say laughs> that. they're having a rum meeting right now. They're having a rum meeting right now. I would expect them to win. They they lost against SV. I think they would want to finish the season strong, so they'll come out in the last game. I'm predicting a hope win for the last game. Exciting weekend. Hopefully the weather cooperates. I think rain was an issue earlier this week. Hopefully the weather looks good, which it always should be um, in St. Vincent. Um, good luck to all of the teams. We'll be there to finish off the final round, round 22, and give our analysis. We're also planning to do a couple of things. We're going to keep under, our, under wraps right now. Uh, a couple of things for after round 22. And then we also plan, because there is going to be a four to six week break until the Premier League starts again. The so Premier League is scheduled to restart at the end of October. So we, we want to keep SVGSPN going. Thank you to all the players who have um, liked us on Facebook, reached out to me on Instagram or to Debson on Instagram. We want 
all you guys looking at what we do. So find us on, on IG, uh, find us on Facebook, certainly find us on YouTube, and the podcast. It's all there for the benefit of y'all. We love the possibilities of what you guys can do and what you guys can be. I was born in that country uh, 44 years ago. I played on the national team 25, 25 or 20 years ago as well. I've been going back for 10 years serving the youth in the country because I love the game and I love the possibilities there. And anything I can do to help, I think this is a way for me to help in terms of at least showing what is good about us and what we can do better. Because there is no reason in 10 years that players can't be flocking to St. Vincent like they do to Antigua right now. And I've been thinking about that over the last couple of years. But the quality of our football has to get better. Debson, I, I thought about this. Are there any foreign-based players playing in the Premier League in St. Vincent? And why not? No, there are only local players playing in St. Vincent. The next step is to have us at the semi-professional or professional level. Once players are being paid, that's the main attraction. So we'll be able to attract players from other countries and that will lift the standard of the football as well. So if we're sure. not even semi-pro, if we're not even semi-pro now, what are we? We're just an amateur league? We're an amateur league. With video footage on Facebook though. With video footage on Facebook. Yeah, and top class analysis. And <laughs> analysts. And analysts. So we're stretching to be big time. So again, come back after round 22. Good luck to everybody in Vincent. If you are a regular listener or watcher of our videos on YouTube, listen to the podcast on Anchor or wherever you get your podcasts. Look at us, our pictures and highlight reels on IG. Certainly tell your friends we want to build this thing to keep it going, just like you want to build um, St. Vincent football. Before I forget, Debson, who is our player of the round? Our player of the round, it's the Trezzy in this loser. Two goals in the key matchup. And also, one of them being a nominee for goal of the round. A lovely left foot finish, so. Two goals in a very big, big game. Trezzy in the Souza, our player of the round. Congratulations, Trezine. There's a young lady who will be de delivering a Lamborghini to your house sooner. If that doesn't happen, please ask Debson. Please ask him because he was in charge of that. <laughs>